All right, a while back, I tried to make this forest tree looking bowl and the resin didn't set. So I ended up having to take off a ton of it and lost everything. And I ended up calling it the twig because it was so, so sad. Um, <clears throat> maybe it was my bruised ego, but I didn't want to try again for a while. So I decided to get back in the saddle and give it a go. The, I used a bit of applewood for the base. <clears throat> All this turns out really cool looking. And then I got a whole bunch of um, lilac bush twigs to make it look like miniature trees. Um, a number of people suggest avoid bubbles to use some kind of sealant. And so I went for it and tried this Kamar varnish and might not have been my best choice. <laughs> <laughs> as you will see I'm not gonna lie my total goal with this one was to avoid bubbles at all costs so I sealed the wood used a pressure pot used the deep set long long setting epoxy um, did everything I possibly could and as you'll find out totally failed but as often as the case when I make something the end result was not what I planned, but better than what I planned. <laughs> so here we go again. Total Boat um, has been awesome in donating epoxy. Uh, this is their deep set, thick set version. Um, the idea here is that it takes so long to set up that it allows bubbles to clear. That worked out wonderfully well. I don't think the, um, the thick set epoxy was the reason I ended up getting bubbles. I tried to be really careful with stirring this. Now uh, this was a lot of epoxy for me. <clears throat> this ended up being Four and a half gallons, I'm sorry, a gallon, not four and a half gallons, a gallon and a half. And then I had to add another two quarts because I didn't quite have enough. So this was a big pour. One of the other goals I've, I've been having is trying to save my forms and I don't waste so much stuff. And I've been just really struggling with that. The only thing that seems to still work is um, stainless steel with... Um, mold release the silicone mold release uh, these are plastic uh, planters from home depot and the inner one i lined with tuck tape and then i soaked it in the silicone release the outer one i just squirted it down with the silicone release and i'll be darned if it actually didn't work so hey progress The inner bolt did not come out really easily, but it came out, didn't break it, didn't put a hole in it. Miraculous. So as I work my way through this, um, you'll see some massive bubbles. My goal was to get no bubbles, and I had the biggest bubbles I've ever seen. <laughs> Classic, right? So it wasn't the epoxy I don't think it came from the piece of wood below. You, you don't really see many bubbles around it. If you look real close, um, it was the dang um, lilac branches. They were far too green. And I kind of knew that going in. I knew it was going to be a problem. But I was hoping the sealant would keep uh, the moisture from exploding. Uh, that failed miraculously badly. But I don't know. The end result, I, I think the bubbles actually make it look better. So I was gonna call this thing the thicket, <laughs> like a thicket of bushes. Ended up reminding me of uh, one of those National Geographic shows where they see that you see the Amazon and the submerged tree roots and the tree and the fish swimming around in there, especially piranha. I actually lived in Brazil for two years as a missionary for my church, and um, I never got to see that. But I did bring home a stuffed piranha, which was pretty awesome. And this this reminded me of that, so I just kind of rolled with it and is what it is turned out pretty cool I think so 
So next project, I'm going to try a different sealant and uh, obviously work with more dried wood. I, I couldn't figure out how to use little twigs or branches that were dry. Uh, you'll notice putting it in there and cramming, it, cramming them together to make enough of the thickness of the branches. If it had been totally dry, they would have broken. They could be really fragile. So it had to be green, or at least the kind of wood I've got access to, it had to be green. So, I don't know. Maybe a better sealant would have kept the moisture in there, but I, I think this thick set epoxy at the size of bowls I'm doing and the thickness of it, it is so hot when it sets. I think it vaporizes the water in, in the wood, and so I'm not sure how to overcome that in the future, but I'm gonna give it another go. Try to get the actual tree look, but another time. As always, my projects are made for fun, for one. I love doing this stuff. This is my therapy after work. Um, but the main goal was to help raise awareness and money for Operation Underground Railroad. This is the, uh, the folks that run around the world doing sting operations, uh, trying to save kids from forced sex slavery, which, believe it or not, is one of the fastest criminal, growing criminal enterprises in the world. Billions of dollars change hands with this every year. They, they say, most studies show, that there's more slavery now than when slavery was actually legal around the world, which blows my mind. And a lot of times it's in plain sight. Um, a lot of prostitution that goes on is not willful. Uh, a lot of kids are forced into this. It's a horrible thing. So these guys are awesome. They go around the world trying to break up this issue save kids and um, so far they've rescued 4,000 at least the Operation Underground Railroad folks have uh, I think they've arrested um, I forget the number 300 or so I'm sorry you know I'm gonna come back on that number I think it's a couple thousand pedophiles people that would take advantage of the situation and it's a never ending problem they're never gonna solve it but at least they can help the kids out that they do um, come in contact with if you are an artist if you're a creator, if you're a woodworker, jeweler, painter, whatever, and you feel the, the desire to do some charity work, go to Art for OUR. We would love your donations. You can decide what it's what it's listed as, how much. You can decide what percentage is donated to Operation Underground Railroad. I know a lot of these things are expensive to make, um, so you can recoup your costs. You can get your shipping reimbursed, and the rest goes to OUR. Um, myself and some of my awesome colleagues, we've, we're have we getting close to raising probably 10 grand for the last year. We've recently come together to make this website and we're hoping to make it grow and become the, the Etsy shop of, of uh, fundraising. So give us a hand, donate something, maybe make a goal to donate something once a year. It's up to you, but your help would be greatly appreciated. If you use epoxy, um, you can see in my description, there's uh, a code PREECE15, that's P-R-E-E-C-E-15. -E -E I can get 15% off um, at totalboat.com. Um, there are a million ways you can help out with this charity. 
Um, one of the easiest things to do, if you see the Amazon links in the description, if you do your shopping on Amazon using one of those links, even if it's not for the thing that's advertised there, or if you go to artforour.org and click on that Amazon link, any purchase you make, well, I shouldn't say any, most purchases you make, 5% uh, of the purchase is donated to Operation Underground Railroad. Super easy. You don't have to do anything you wouldn't have done anyways. anyways same cost to you with or without it. Um, but all every purchase you make, uh, I donate the proceeds I get as an Amazon affiliate uh, to OUR. It's strictly for fundraising. My daughter the other day she came to me and said hey can I make something in the shop she's um come on 15 years old and is a legit teenage girl as as it gets um we are often at odds and when she said she was interested in doing something on the, on the lathe I said absolutely so we ran out to the garage and she made a rolling pin rolling pin one of those French rolling pins turned out really nice Just a quick shout out to the folks that have watched my channel. Um, I mean, this started out as just a whim. I don't know, last March, I started taking this serious about a year ago. And uh, while it doesn't raise a ton of money for OUR, we did we did raise our first thousand bucks uh, just from viewership. Um, we were able to get monetized. Uh, we're about to crack 4,000 subscribers. I noticed the other day we're about to push past 400,000 views and um, I think it's like 40, 45,000 hours of watch time, which, you know, if it gets the word out about OUR and share some cool ideas about woodworking and resin working, that's fantastic. So thanks for your support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, please share, please subscribe. If you do a paid membership, um, all that money goes to OUR, so I don't keep a dime. Any Anything that comes in with sponsorships and whatnot, I pass on. So thank you for your support. I've appreciated the uh, tips on sanding and finishing. Um, quite frankly, I don't have time to do a ton of research on this, so I just kind of wing it. Right now, my setup is sanding from uh, uh, 60 or 80 grit up to 400. And then I've got these sponge-backed wet sanding um, squares. Uh, this is what you see right there. They... Um, get them wet works works this is best for resin of course but um that'll take me from 500 grit up to about 2000 and if you take your time and do it right 
man, it turned out great on this bowl. Not a single scratch as far as I could tell. When I combine that with a teak oil finish, um, I really can't see any blemishes. Um, yeah, I've been quite happy with that system. This way I don't have to take off any finish. Um, some of these friction sanding dills, I, I don't know. I'm sure they're great, but that's a quick, easy way to get a really almost perfect finish. You know, one of these days I'm going to get this branding sequence to actually focus. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is, but I'd love to have my own little brand. My dad was a cowboy. He grew up in southern Utah and had, or I'm not, I'm not, not southern Utah, central Utah, and a bona fide cowboy. And uh, I love branding my bowls, kind of a nod to my, my late cowboy dad who taught me how to work with my hands, how to work with power tools, and kind of gave me the basic skill set to be able to play around the shop and do things. streak you don't get any brush marks um, stabilizes wood that's cracking just a real versatile um, finish and I usually get a really good gloss shine if that's what you're going for without having to work too hard a couple of coats of that and you're set uh, unless the wood's really soft and porous but 